Hi guys and welcome to another Divi theme tutorial. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignTechTips.com. Well, we've been building this little site with a fantastic Divi4 theme. If you want to take it for a test drive, you can do so from my affiliate link below this video. And incidentally, if you're watching this on today, which is November 29th, 2019, they've got a huge Black Friday sale on. Okay, so today we're going to build this post slider. Obviously, you need some posts on your site before you can do this, but I've got plenty here. Um, so we're going to just build this really easy with the Divi theme. So I'm going to go to a page that doesn't have it on it. I'm going to enable the visual builder so we can build on the front end. Once loaded, let's go down to where we want to work. And add a new section, a little blue bu button for a section here. I'll make it a regular section. Within that section, I'm just going to have one row, one column. Now it's going to automatically prompt us to put a module in. And Divi comes by default with all these great modules here, plenty enough to build pretty much any site. And if you've got WooCommerce installed, it's got another 16 also. Okay, so post slider, there it is. And it's already put it in there, which is great. So that's the video over. No, I'm just kidding. We'll, we'll style it, make it our own. I mean, that's great, but I need to do a few things with it. First thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to save this and close it down. Just hit the little green check mark there. I want to give our section a colored background to offset this a bit more. We've been using a blue color. So I just clicked on the blue section tab up there. I'm going to go to background. I'm going to just select blue as the background color. Save that. Great. So let's go back into our module. As I say, blue one is for the section, blue tab. Green tab is for a row. Dark tab is for the actual module within the row. Hit the little cog to edit. And it gives you a bunch of options. So firstly, how many posts do you want to display? Well, let's say 12. I think I've got plenty on there. Um, and obviously, I think I mentioned this before, you need to have posts on your site before you can do this or it won't work. And underneath, you can uh, select a category and have them all. I'm just going to go for web design. I think I've got 12 in there under web design. We imported these posts from a, another site, actually my, my live blog site to demonstrate how to import and export posts from WordPress. Check out that video if you want to know how to do that. Okay, order, new to old, that suits me. You can choose different orders and things like that there, but new to old is fine. Read more. If you want it to say something else, or read post, whatever, you can type it in there. I'm going to leave mine to read more. For the content display, show excerpt or show the whole content. Well, it's just showing an excerpt there, which works for me. If it's if it if I put it to show content, there would be much too much info there. Show post excerpts, yes. Length of it. 270 characters you can shorten it or or lengthen it say 150 and as you can see it's a lot shorter there I'll put it back to 250 and that's the amount of characters or letters not the amount of words offset don't need an offset elements show arrows when we hover, it's got an arrow. Show controls. These are little controllers, these dots down here. Show the read more button, obviously. And show post metadata. And this is by author, date, uh, category, and amount of comments. Featured image. Well, this is the featured image. At the moment, we're showing it as a background. I'll just move this over a little bit. You can have it on the left and put a different color background in, which is pretty cool. Obviously, you can have it on the right, top or bottom. But for me, I quite like it as a background. I know that this text right here is not 
100% legible. I mean, you, you can read it, but it's not the easiest thing to read with that background, but we'll fix that in a moment. Link. Well, if you want the module to link to somewhere else, you can do that. So you can have the actual module when they click on it, link to an external page or another page, and then the read more button can link to your actual blog post. But I don't want to have the module link anywhere else. It's pretty handy to do sometimes, but today I'll leave it as is. Background, I'm not even going to worry about uh, because we're using a background image here. Admin label, we've mentioned that before. If you've got a lot of busy site with lots and lots of modules on it, it's a good idea to name your module so you know which each one, what each one's called. So if I flip this to wireframe mode, which is this little icon over here. If you happen to be editing in this mode, instead of everything saying blurb, slider, blog, whatever, you can give it a custom name so you know exactly one, exactly what each one is. Because sometimes you'll have, for instance, four number counters or, or 20 posts or 20 texts and you want to edit one of them on the back end here and you don't know what it is that's when you want to put in an admin label like that so let's go back to our desktop version go back down to where we are and we'll move on to designing this thing here we are let's hit the design tab now I mentioned before about that background image not making this writing particularly easy to read so we're going to hit the overlay button here. I'm going to say yes, use background overlay. I'm going to choose black. And as you can see, it's gone completely black, which negates the idea of having a background image. But if we click on the actual color itself, go over to the right hand slider. I just left click there, pull it down. The image will start bleeding through and just pull it down to where you can see pretty much most of the image, but the writing is still legible. So that's pretty pretty good for me. Um, if you choose, you can turn this one off. Use text overlay. And it'll just put an overlay on the text right there. So you can read it better. But I like the background overlay better. So I'm going to turn that one back off. Navigation. That's our little arrows and dots down here. Just going to click on that. I'm going to make them both orange because that's what we've been using for the rest of the site. As you can see, that's now orange, and our dots are now orange. Image, don't need to mess with an image because we've got a background image there. Let's go on down. Text, I'm not even going to change the text. If you want to change the, the boldness of the title text or whatever you want to do, you can do it right here. But I'm just going to leave everything as it is for expediency. So you can change the font size, the font type, the weight, uh, the alignment, the color give it a bit of text shadow if you want to but like I said I'm gonna leave that exactly as it is I think it will change the meta text to orange you see there I think it gave that a bit of box shadow before just to make it stand out a little bit scrolling on down now we do want to customize our button and make it sort of more like our other ones um, which are sort of pilled shape so let's click on button use custom styles for button yes flip that to yes text size I'm gonna leave that as is button text colors fine but I do want to change the background so you've got a color a gradient or an image I'm gonna use the color it's on color I'm gonna select the orange again and if you want to change color on the hover state just go up hover over where it says button background here these icons will appear click on the arrow and this is common for most modules in the Divi theme here you get a desktop version which is when your mouse is not on it and you get a hover version and you can change the color so if we go down let's change that to green there we go and I'll do the same with the border I'm going to just flip that back to desktop so it goes to the regular color again border width two pixels that's default that's fine for me at the moment border color well we want to make that orange but we want to change it on hover so I'll just hover over where it says 
button border color, hit the arrow, and I'll change that to green on hover. There we go. And let's go back to the desktop version. Button border radius, which is just below. This is what I need to change to make it pill shaped like the ones above. So I'm just going to put in 50 pixels there. If you just type in 50, it'll put in the PX for you. And you've got a little pill shape button. Letter spacing is fine. The font's fine. The weight's fine. I'm going to capitalize it. You've got italicized, capitalized, upper and lower capitals, underline, and line through. So I'm just going to hit that little capitalized. Now when I hover over it, it's got that little icon there. I don't want to see that icon. That doesn't work for me. But if you do, Elegant Themes give you all these wonderful icons to work with. But I'm going to just flip that to no. Now when I hover over it, no icon. Fantastic. Alignment middle. What's well, in the middle anyway? Let's just keep it there. I want to make it a bit wider. And to do that, I need to use a bit of button padding left and right. So I think I'll give it 60 picks. Just put in 60. It'll put the PX for you again and hit the little link and it'll do the opposite side for you. That's fine. Okay, let's give our little post slider a border here, a little orange border and a bit of box shadow like we've done before. So we're going to hit the border. Border styles, I'm going to do them all. You can do all four sides. You can do top, right, bottom and left. I'll say one pixel and I'm going to make it orange. There it is. Scroll on down a little bit, put a bit of box shadow on the bottom. Now the only thing left we want to do is a bit of animation. We've been using the slide. That's fine with me. I'm going to have it just slide in like that. You can choose center, right, left, up, down. Center is going to work for me today. Duration is fine, one second, 1000 milliseconds. Don't want it to delay, I want it to happen right away. Intensity is fine. Play with these and you can get some amazing effects. Now, all I want to do is now go down to automatic animation and turn this to on so that the, the slides revolve automatically. I'm going to change that to 5000 because it's milliseconds, which would be five seconds. There we go. And I'm going to leave this to off. Continue automatic slide on hover. Means when you hover over it with your mouse, it won't roll to the next slide, which gives people time to read the content and also click the button if they want to. So I'm going to leave that there. And I think we're done. So let's just hit save. Let's hit save again. Once we're saved, let's exit the visual builder and go down. Take a look at what we've got. And there it is. Every five seconds it should slide to the next one. There we go. Now let's make sure our arrows work. Yep, that's fine. And the buttons. Fantastic. Okay, and let's make sure we go to a post when we read it. When we hit that read more button. And there you are works perfectly if we go back so there you have it there's how to create a post slider using the fantastic new divi 4 theme i hope you've enjoyed that and found it useful if you have please give it a thumbs up share comment and subscribe to the channel once again this has been jamie from system 22 and webdesignandtechtips.com thanks for watching have a great day